Hey guys, how's it going? Working as a 3D artist is fun because you can literally learn and create your own digital world. After you're done with all the modeling, texturing, and compositing, you have finally reached the rendering process, which uses all your computing power to spit out those sweet, sweet images so you can finally enjoy your days of hard work. But what would you do when you're not rendering or working? Because when your piece is idle, then it's just sitting there doing nothing. So have you ever wondered what can you do with your PC when it's not in use? Maybe use it as a passive income. Well, the keen eyed ones of you who have watched the previous render farm video that I posted some time ago might have already recognized the PC setup, especially the riser and the motherboard combo. Which you should check the video out by the way later if you're interested. While I use that PC as a render farm, I also use it for another activity as well. And yes, my friend, we are going mining. No, not the digging type of mining, but more of a cryptocurrency mining. Now, hold on, hold on. I know that some of you might not like the idea of mining, maybe because of the current GPU hoarding situation or the green movement, which I completely understand and highly respect your opinion. But I'm merely here as the bearer of the news and I'm sharing you my findings and experiences after doing this for some time. If you decide to keep watching this video until the end, which I will be very grateful for, I am pretty sure you'll learn a thing or two, not only about the basics of cryptocurrency and mining, but also about overclocking and how you may actually improve your render speed by using the mining overclocking settings. Now that I've had it cleared up, let's continue. Some of you might already know what mining is, but I'm going to explain it a little bit how all this mining works in a way that someone who is not too tax savvy can still understand. If you're not living under a rock, I'm pretty sure you've all heard of something called the cryptocurrency. You may have heard this term thrown around along with NFT and decentralized uh, digital currency and financial system. So what's so special about this mining and cryptocurrency thingy? To better understand it, I'm gonna use this simple drawing. Imagine you're this guy sending money to this guy. Now in traditional currency like US dollar, euro or rupiah, we have a middleman, like a bank or the government, for example. The problem is that they are centralized and the transaction data has to be given to this middleman. So it is first not private and how the process and the transaction is handled will be at the mercy of this middleman. But cryptocurrency does this transaction in an encrypted fashion. It also takes out that centralized middleman and assign a random person from the network of this cryptocurrency, let's say Ethereum, on the internet as the middleman. Now this middleman is what we call the miner. The miner's job is to make sure that the transaction that is being done is legit. That way, the transaction is secure, decentralized, and more private. The miner then get a reward for maintaining and running the network properly. There are two ways to do this. First one is mining, which is what we're going to be talking about in this video. And the second one is staking. Now this is a gross oversimplification of how crypto mining works. Leave a comment down below if you'd like me to talk about this more in this channel. In mining, the transaction is verified by brute forcing puzzles of insane mathematical difficulty. And that is where your dormant PC comes in. Those puzzles are calculated using your computer hardware, like your GPU, CPU, or even your hard drive space. And once you're done verifying those puzzles, you'll receive some reward. You can leave it on while sleeping and it will basically work by itself, essentially working as a passive income. Still interested? Follow me. Now I'm not going to build the PC from the start this time because I'm using the same PC I used from the render farm video which is actually this one this giant monstrosity of a computer Yes its primary use cases are both as my personal render farm and for mining when I'm not rendering. Now we're going to mine Ethereum since it's the most profitable cryptocurrency to mine at the time of recording. And the most important part of mining Ethereum is its raw GPU power. So we can focus only on the GPU and we can leave the other part just enough to support the softwares. This is why in the beginning I teach you guys with a rendering process. This PC is rocking 81070s supported by a Core i3-7100 8GB of RAM on a B250 BTC Pro mining motherboard. We're going to use the latest version of Windows 10 at this time of recording. Since we are going to mine Ethereum, there are three apps that you're gonna have to download. The first one is the miner, 
the Ethereum wallet and the overclocking software. For those, I'm going to use T-Rex Miner, MetaMask for my wallet, and MSI Afterburner for overclocking. You can find all the links in the description below. Now, before we start mining, I need to give a disclaimer about the mining application. Make sure to download the app from a trusted source like the original GitHub link. Mining apps are usually unsigned applications, and if you download the wrong one, it may contain malware. Even when you're sure that you have downloaded the correct mining application, usually they are still flagged as a malware by your antivirus software. So if you've reached this part, there are two things that I recommend you to do. First is by turning off your antivirus or putting them in an exclusion folder for your antivirus. While the mining app, if downloaded correctly, are typically safe, there is still no guarantee that they will be 100% safe. But I have mined with this method and rescanned the whole PC and nothing was confirmed as a malware and my PC was doing just fine when mining or not. So this could be just a false positive by the antivirus. Or second, if you're still scared, which is completely understandable by the way, but you still want to continue, you can specifically build a PC for render and mining farm with no personal information attached to it, like this PC for example. But to be honest, from what I've read, many people are mining with their main personal rig and they're doing just fine. So uh, do your own research. With that out of the way, let's continue. Now, to begin, start by creating a wallet using MetaMask. All you gotta do is download MetaMask at metamask.io and install it. It is a cryptocurrency wallet that is located in your browser as a plugin. Once downloaded, click on MetaMask, create wallet, and keep your secret recovery password safe. The last one is extremely important since if you lose it, you lose all your funds. Follow the instructions needed there and once you've created a wallet, you'll have to copy the Ethereum address by clicking here. This is the address where you're going to receive your mining rewards. This is basically like your banking account number. Now with the wallet done, we can go to the miner. Let's get your T-Rex miner now. To download it, go to their GitHub page and download the file. Once the file is downloaded, extract it and there should be a pre-built bat file called something along the lines of mineethereum.bat. Edit it using your text editor of choice. Change the Ethereum address to your Ethereum address from MetaMask. And you can also change the name of your rig here, by the way, if, if you're planning to build more than one PC for mining. After that, we're going to use a pool, which is basically a service that gathers the computing power of multiple computers to mine together. Now, there are plenty of pools out there, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to use Ethermine in this one. Go to their website, ethermine.org, then click Get Started. Copy the link and the port according to the regions where you live in, and then paste it to the bat file. Once you save it, you can double click the bat file and congrats, you're already mining now. But mining can be a very taxing process for your GPU, especially if you keep it running for an extended period of time. Mining consumes a lot of energy and can produce a ton of heat. It can get your GPU to run at 83 degrees Celsius, which is super hot especially if you're planning to run this at 24-7. Your GPU will also mine slower because when your GPU overheats, it throttles its performance. Running this at your stock GPU settings is definitely not advised since it can harm your GPU. Now this is where undervolting and overclocking comes in. Undervolting reduces the maximum energy usage of your GPU, keeping it cooler as a result, and overclocking increases its core and memory performance beyond its stock performance. Now in order to undervolt it, we're gonna need an overclocking software like the MSI Afterburner. You need to download it from the website and then install it. And once you're done, open it up. Now this one is a bit difficult because each hardware is different. For my GPU, I'm gonna use a 72 power limit with a 50 on the core clock and 560 on the memory. This setting might only apply for a 1070 card. And even then, you still have to find the sweet spot for your GPU yourself because over overclocking may cause stability issues. This may depend on your hardware silicon lottery though. Your GPU may be able to push more or if you're unlucky, maybe less. Once you're done with the overclocking, you can run the miner again and monitor it for a while. If it does affect your stability, say it causes crashes or blue screen, Try increasing the power limit or reducing the core clock or the memory. Now this is the settings for mining Ethereum, which highly favors memory speed. Other coins might be different, but we're not getting into that at the moment. As you can see, after the undervolt, my GPU doesn't get over 71 Celsius, which previously maxed out at 83 degrees. It also consumes less power from the wall. While it might be throttling, I'm completely okay with that. It is hashing at 197 megahash or 24 megahash per GPU. 
The higher the hash rate, the better your mining power is. The different hash rates here are normal because I'm using different GPU branch, which means uh, different cooling system, core, and memory performance. As you can see, overclocking can actually increase the longevity of your GPU and reduces your power consumption. I also did the test for rendering under the stock performance versus the mining overclock, and it turns out that the render speed is actually unaffected or even faster although by a very minute margin of error. This means that even if you're not planning to mine, you'll still be able to take advantage of these overclocking settings. Mind you that this is using my hardware and your results may vary. You can estimate your income by using uh, watermine.com. From this website, if you put your hash rate, we can see that I'll be receiving around 347 US dollars per month or around 43 US dollars per month at the time of recording. It's pretty sweet, right? You can also go to ethermine.org and put your Ethereum wallet address to see the performance of your rig. This is great for monitoring your PC in case you're planning to leave it because you can access it from your phone as well. It'll take a while to show up, maybe around 15 minutes, and it'll take even longer to show its maximum hash rate, but it should be up around in an hour. To be frank, this might not be the best mining method out there since I'm still experimenting myself. There are other things that can be improved to maximize your mining stability and income. Since you're probably going to shift your PC usage from mining to rendering quite often, I recommend checking out other posts that has a PPS plus payment method. You can check the links down in the description for the available mining posts out there. There's also nice hats, which is much easier to set up. All you gotta do is sign up to the website and then download the application. Run the benchmark tool or whatever they call it right now and then you're ready to mine. But by using IceHash, you're gonna sacrifice the mining freedom and usually you get lower payment. If you're okay with making that compromises, then the link is also in the description. Now, if you've reached this state, you may be interested in mining by now. Or not, which is okay. If you do, you may say to yourself, now, I should just go out and get all the GPU that is. Well, no. Unfortunately, GPU prices are sky high right now due to the current world situation, supply and demand problems, mining rush, and global material supply problem. And while the price has been dropping by a bit, it is still very expensive. I bought this 1070s at around 300 US dollars per card sometime before the previous bull run, which is to be honest still very expensive. A single 1070 right now costs around 450 US dollars in the current market in Indonesia, which is actually more expensive than the retail price four years ago at around 380 US dollars. Some people even sell it at 700 US dollars on eBay and people are still buying it. It is knocking fuss. And that is why I'm targeting this video to 3D artists, which usually already has one or more GPUs at their disposal. If you manage to get a GPU at the retail price or at a very, very good deal, then yeah, sure, why not if you can do it. Then again, this video is not a financial advice. So do your own research before doing any of this. I will not be held responsible for any of your hardware failures or any other bad financial decisions like buying GPUs at exorbitant prices. I'm merely here as the bearer of the news. So please, again, do your own research. Anyway, this video is already quite long. I think I'm ended here. What should I talk about next in the video then? Leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe. It takes me quite a while to create this video, so any help is highly appreciated. With all that said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.